Today I'm going to tell you the best camera settings for your DSLR to take amazing astrophotography images. Hi everybody, my name is Nick and welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. If this is your first time here, then this channel is all about helping people on their astrophotography journey. So if that is something that you're interested in, then do consider subscribing. Now there are three main settings that we need to consider when setting up our camera for astrophotography. And those are aperture, ISO and shutter speed or exposure length, you might also hear it called. These three settings make up what's known as the exposure triangle. And some of you experienced photographers will already know what I'm talking about here. But essentially, if you make a change to one of these settings, then you're going to affect one of the other settings as well. I.e. if you're taking a photograph at ISO 100 and you change the ISO to ISO 200, then you're going to also need to adjust your shutter speed to take into account the fact that you'll now be taking a brighter image with a higher ISO, but we'll get into much more detail on that later. Luckily for us astrophotographers, we don't really have to deal with changing conditions such as extreme light or just general weather, because we're always going to be imaging at night under a clear sky. And to be honest, if you're always imaging in your garden, then the biggest variable that you're going to have is the moon. Now I'm going to add my usual caveat to this video where the settings that I use are what has worked best for me and my equipment, your equipment may differ slightly, but the biggest difference between my scenario and your scenario is probably going to be light pollution, depending on where you live. I'm semi-rural, I'm in sort of Baltal 4 slash 5 area. If you're in an inner city, then some of these settings may need to be adjusted for the particular situation that you're working in. But hopefully the examples that I use will give you a good baseline at least. So let's start with shutter speed. Shutter speed, or exposure time, is basically the amount of time that we allow light to hit our camera sensor. Now seeing as that we're obviously going to be imaging at night, we want to be able to expose for as long as possible so that we can capture those really faint details in a deep sky object. How long you can expose for will depend on a couple of variables, one of them being local light pollution, another one being whether or not you're using a tracking mount, and if you are using a tracking mount, how accurate your polar alignment is. Therefore, the ideal exposure time in astrophotography is as long as you can keep the stars round in the image and not start to see star trails. If you start to see star trails, then you've gone too far. So dial it back to the point where you're at your absolute maximum exposure time, but you're not getting those egg-shaped stars. And a really good way to do that is to zoom in on the back of your camera and just look at the edge stars, the ones that are around the edge. If they've started to go egg-shaped, then you've started to get star trails, and therefore you'll want to dial back your exposure time just a little bit. The other thing to look out for is your local light pollution. I'm here in a Bortle 4 slash 5, and therefore I can get away with imaging without a light pollution filter for sort of two minutes. If you're in the middle of a city, then that's not really gonna work for you without some sort of filter attached. But a couple of examples of exposure times that I can do with my setup. So if I'm using my HEQ5 Pro with my three inch refractor and my auto guiding equipment, then I can kind of expose for as long as I want, as long as I'm using a narrowband filter. The great thing about auto guiding is that I know my equipment will be tracking the sky really accurately and therefore exposure time isn't really of concern at that point. However, without auto guiding equipment, then the maximum that I've ever been able to get is two and a half minutes, um, but it was a little bit iffy. I, I would say that two minutes was probably my maximum exposure time that I could do at that point. Now, I know a lot of the viewers on this channel will be using the Star Adventurer or some other portable tracking mount. If I'm using the Star Adventurer with my three inch refractor, then I can generally only get about 90 seconds. That's mostly down to the tripod that I'm using. But if I'm using a wide field camera lens, if I'm using my uh, Canon Nifty 50, for example, or the uh, 40 millimeter Rokinon lens that I recently bought, then I could easily expose for two minutes at that point as well. Um, so that's just a guideline of the equipment that I've been using under the conditions that I have here. So that's a good baseline for you. But as a general rule of thumb, I think everybody should be able to get two minute exposures so long as you're using a tracking mount with a reasonable polar alignment. If you're not using a tracking mount and you're just having your camera sat static on top of a tripod, then obviously you're going to be a lot more limited in terms of your exposure time. You might find that, again, this is very much dependent on your focal length. It could be anywhere between five and 30 seconds. 
The next setting that we need to talk about is aperture. Now, aperture can be a very simple setting for us in astrophotography because if you're using a telescope, then your aperture is fixed and you can't change it. And therefore, you don't really need to worry about aperture. However, if you're using a camera lens, then obviously you'll want to change your aperture as well. Now, even with a camera lens, Aperture is a really simple setting for us in astrophotography for the simple reason being that we are imaging at night and therefore we want our aperture to be able to collect as much light as possible and therefore as a general rule of thumb you pretty much want your aperture to always be wide open and the key with aperture is the lower the number the more open your lens is. For example the Canon 50mm lens that I have is an f1.8 lens and so at its absolute widest, it's an f1.8, capturing as much light as possible. Now, unless you have really, really dark skies, f1.8 is going to be too wide for you. So you probably want to stop it down to f2.8. If you're in the middle of a city with a lot of light pollution, you may need to stop it down even more than that. And the final setting is ISO. And ISO is actually quite a complicated thing in itself, but it is a really simple explanation ISO will affect the sensitivity of your camera's sensor. So the lower the ISO number, the longer you'll need to expose for to achieve the same results than a higher ISO, if that makes sense. So if you're imaging at ISO 800 and exposing for two minutes, you might find it easier to bump up your ISO to 1600, but only expose for one minute instead of two minutes, for example. Now, the key thing to note about ISO is that the higher the ISO, the more noise you're going to introduce to your light frames. And therefore, it's not as simple as just whacking the ISO up to the absolute max because you'll get to a point where your image is so bright and so noisy that they'll be completely unusable. Settings that I generally use are ISO 800 or ISO 1600. If it's new moon and the skies are quite dark, I will use ISO 1600 every single time. If the moon is quite bright in the sky, or like now when we move into the summer months, I lose all astro dark and therefore it's generally easier to image at ISO 800 because the sky isn't actually as dark as it would be anyway and so I don't need to make my uh, image any brighter than it already is after a two minute exposure. So to summarize, as a general rule of thumb for shutter speed or exposure time, we generally want to expose for as long as possible before we start seeing star trails or before we introduce so much light pollution into the image that it becomes unusable. For aperture, if you're using a telescope, don't even need to worry about it. If you're using a camera lens, then the general rule of thumb is that you'll want it to be as wide open as possible because you want to be letting in as much light as possible to the camera sensor so that you're collecting the faint details on a deep sky object. And the ISO will change the sensitivity of your camera sensor and therefore the higher the ISO, the brighter your image will be. A general rule of thumb, start with ISO 800 and see how that looks and then play around with ISO 1600 to see if that works for you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do remember to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel and also share this video if you think other people will find it useful as well. My name is Nick and you have been watching Astro Exploring.